of the Aviators channel. So today we uh, knocked off a bucket list item. Um, we, uh, we flew down to Arizona for uh, a mountain biking adventure and one of the things on my bucket list was to fly through the Grand Canyon but like a lot of pilots I was really nervous about the airspace rules and, and which quarters you could fly and, and what permission you need to get and the more I dug into it the more easy it became so I thought I'd do a quick video on how to do it and we drug a camera along uh, for our flight today and uh, so I'm going to demystify some of those uh, some of those concerns you might have flying through the canyon. Uh, there are a couple of frequencies you want to monitor uh, and I'll talk about those in a little while um, and there are very specific corridors that you can fly through with very specific altitude restrictions. Okay, so if you're flying northbound through the park, you would fly at 11.5 or 13.5. If you're flying southbound through the park, you would fly at 10.5 or 12.5. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a couple of minutes. But here is the approach end um, to the Zuni corridor, which is how we entered the park. Um, our altitude is 11,500, 11,500. Um, and we're monitoring 120.5. So um, you want to monitor these frequencies all through the park just to, you know, if there are any pilots in the area, um, they're going to call out. We didn't see another plane. I didn't see another plane on ADSB. Um, and it, it ended up being, you know, just another, just another flight, a spectacular one, but just another flight. So if this is something you ever want to do, I would highly encourage it. And, uh, um, you know, don't let these restrictions scare you off. So here's the first uh, clip of us uh, entering the Zuni corridor, entering the airspace of the park. We're at 11,500. And um, one uh, caution uh, I would have is, you know, the equipment you're flying. If you're flying a Cessna 150, you're going to want to do that in the dead of winter where, where you've got the, where you're able to get yourself out of trouble. As we flew over the rim, um, you know, we were a thousand foot up, a thousand foot down in terms of updrafts and, and downdrafts. So you want to be real careful about that. So um, here's the first clip us entering in the. point we had entered the airspace of the park we were monitoring 120.05 120.05 is the frequency you want to monitor um, real quick I'm going to post my flight plan through the, the various corridors and I've posted it such that you can download the GPS coordinates and um, load those into your flight plan if you want to fly the same route we did so here's that Next is the Zuni Point Corridor. This is the initial corridor to get you um, into some of the most scenic parts of, uh, of, of the flight. And, um, you know, you want to watch your altitude. You want to make sure you're on the corridor. Uh, you want to monitor 120.05. And um, you want to slow down. Um, I looked down at my airspeed. I was doing 190 knots and uh, uh, had a great tailwind. But... Uh, you know, I didn't want to fly through the whole park in 20 minutes. So, um, you know, keep your airspeed, keep your, uh, um, monitor the right frequencies, make sure you're at 11,500 and, uh, and enjoy the scenery. Here it goes.
flight plan again so you can see the top part of, of, of where we're starting our westerly turn. So here's that. So that first kind of initial fly over the rim is, is spectacular. The video doesn't do it justice. Um, and we even took that with 4K video. So um, the next part of the video is the transition from the Zuni corridor to the Dragon corridor. The Dragon corridor is to the west. Now you have two choices. You can go down to 10.5 and fly through at 10.5, but you're only 500 foot off the ground at that point. Uh, which I wouldn't recommend in any airplane. Um, or you can go up to 12.5. We elected to go up to 12.5. So you'll see a transition where we gained about uh, 2,000 feet, or I forget what it was, but we were at 11.5. So we gained 1,000 foot of, um, of elevation and began our westerly turn. Um, at this point, you're over a lot of forest. You know, if something were to go wrong, you know, God forbid, you wouldn't want to be low, you'd want to be high. And so... I'd recommend 12.5, uh, and that's what we did. So uh, let's show you that. Dragon corridor. This is a north to south corridor. You can be at 10.5 or you can be at 12.5. We elected to be at 12.5. Energy is something you never get back, and so you know we just wanted to play it safe, and it's still just spectacular. So here's the turn into the Dragon corridor. Um, it's the second of three corridors we did. So here you go. a time lapse of the last corridor we did and uh, then we exited the park to the uh, to the east and uh, went, on, went and uh, flew over Meteor Crater outside of Winslow, Arizona. I'd highly recommend you do that if you, if you it's just a cool feature on the ground um, on our way back to uh, uh, back to the airport. So uh, here you go. Okay, so that's uh, our flight through the Grand Canyon. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the little video. hope it helps you if you're a pilot and you want to try to do it yourself. Um, great experience, and, uh, you know, if you like this sort of thing, like, subscribe, comment. Until next time.